we have to talk about we have to talk about this clip that's just gone viral on the Fire and the Kids sub where Brendan Shaw talks about in some detail the most he's done so far about his alleged not alleged we all knew about his Adderall addiction he's now trying to kind of retcon it or you know tell a different story like he always had it under control it was never an issue it's just like bruh we've seen the dms we've seen you asking for the baddies and the addies we know what the deal is like we, we know bgo exposed everything we obviously see by your behavior how you're acting your how you're slurring your words more than usual and just in general how you're going on with life and the fact that he used to speak about Adderall as like a weird because with Brendan he used to speak about Adderall as like a biohacking like a human optimization thing like he was basically using Adderall so he could do uh, all the jobs that he's got all the podcasts he's got because he's always hustling and always grinding that's he kind of used it as a kind of as a flex as something to kind of flaunt to people like oh look look at how much fucking work I'm getting done because I'm doing so much fucking Adderall and now he's trying to you know retell the story but it came up during a recent episode with Jay Moore. He sat down with them, um, the once enemy of uh, Burt Kreischer and the boyfriend of Jeannie Buss, one of the executives over there at the LA Lakers. I don't know why I know that, but I do. And he sat down with the Fire and the Kid. And I guess he spoke about his addiction. And again, Brendan, classic comedian form. You speak about something, I make it all about me. So this is a clip here where he speaks about and admits to being an adderall addict i wasn't well, so honest with my say, today you just told me that you you had this whole addiction with adderall Awkward. i've told you before this. no but i know but i'm saying today you just said that you, were, <laughs> you know today you were saying this is about jay yes awkward <laughs> but you said you kept interrupting I said on road you were in, in, you were interrupting all the time when we were doing the podcast remember that like uh and, six and months people ago. were always saying that to me and i i didn't No, we've been saying that forever this guy's been interrupting and ruining podcasts for fucking ever. And it's been annoying. And I think one of the things that could easily remedy the interrupting thing is headphones. One of the reasons why the Joe Rogan experience is so good and why it works, especially in terms of an audio experience, especially if it's more than two people, it's, it's more than just Joe Rogan and the guest, is because he gets the guest to wear headphones and they monitor themselves. So you're hearing yourself and you're hearing the other people speaking to you on the pod. So like a normal conversation you'd have with somebody if you're on the phone and you kept hearing yourself interrupting them, you'd stop and let them speak. And it'd make for a far more enjoyable conversation, especially when there's more than two people on the pod or if you have a tendency to interrupt. But for some reason, Brendan just is impervious to any suggestions, any insight, any whatever, any, any suggestions, any advice and just kind of part it off as haters. But... People that don't even enjoy the show would tell them, stop interrupting. Let people finish their sentence. Ask a question. Let someone answer them. On the Shub show, on the fucking um, Food Truck Diaries, you ask a fire a fucking question and then just answer it himself and let the fire just stand there for like two minutes waiting for him to fucking answer the question that he asked them. Like, that interrupting thing was happening before the Adderall. So another kind of annoying thing about this version of the fire and the kid uh, being a football fan is how fucking cucked out Brian is for Brendan. I understand his loyalty to him because in a weird way, Brendan has been the one constant in Brian's life. And the fact that Brian went through that traumatic rape allegation shit, right? That probably is true, but you know, whatever. You kind of just, you know, bounce off that one. But going through that and getting cancelled and shit and off the back of just finding success in Hollywood in his late 50s, right? and then getting cancelled, and having to start again, and only having podcasts to rely on, I understand why he's holding on to Brendan for dear life, and defending him for with his life, and using his, his body as a fucking human shield to protect Brendan from any sort of criticism. But let's be real, Brendan was interrupting before Addies and Baddies. Brendan was being a douchebag, and being fucking horrendous to fucking talk to, and to communicate with, and whatever it may be, before the Addies and Baddies. It wasn't the Addies and Baddies that turned him into that guy. He's just, for some reason, turned into that guy. Maybe it's the money, maybe it's the fame, maybe it's his ego. We don't know. But everybody's been calling it out from day dots. It's not the Addies and Baddies, just the fact that he is the way he is. But I love this retelling of the narrative. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I, I didn't know you were on Adderall. No one did. <clears throat> right, but you were, you so would, one, you would, so you would constantly, to me. right, <laughs> but you would constantly <laughs> look up and I never <laughs> understood what was going <laughs> no, on. I wish. No, yeah. my, even my wife, she had no clue. 
till she was doing the laundry and she was, I was telling him that she was doing it. Cause I, before I do stand up, I'd have the pills. So I would wear these jeans. I'd have pills here, here. Damn. And then you forget cause you're going through it. And she was doing laundry and wringing it out and they fell on the floor. My kids like, oh. Here, here Brendan Shaw missed the really, I think decent joke from Jay Moore. He's talking about his pants having loads of pockets where he put all these Adderalls in, which I think is a bit of a lie. I pressed X for doubt on that one. That whole, oh, the wife was doing my laundry and all these po pills fell out like M&M's. Bullshit. If you take Adderall, I'm assuming, because it's basically speed, you're doing a lot of it. You're not going to just have 10 Adderalls lying around. You're doing them all the time if you're actually addicted to it. So the fact that he would have a couple just lying all around all over the pockets of his fucking denim sweatshorts, com no, denim... Um, combat sweatpants with elasticated cuffs at the bottom. Honestly, these pants are the worst pants ever. I fucking hate these pants that he always wears. I hate them with the same level of hate that I hate Brian Callen's fucking annoying, stupid, blood diamond, human, you know, animal exploitation fucking toehold sandals. I fucking hate those shits, but I hate those denim combat elasticated pants more. They're fucking horrible. But listen to J Moore's little joke. That they completely miss oh candy i'm like mm, nope was it those jeans like for a, a bit <laughs> what you wore those jeans like for a bit <laughs> yeah yeah come on brendan you're a professional comic man get with the fucking come on he's so fucking slow like it took him so chin had to laugh then brian then he then he realized but he's his brain still didn't connect it because he's in serious mode. He's bearing his soul. He's being honest. He's really being true. He's being for real. He's being self-reflect. Like, come on, you're a comedian. Come on. You have to be able to oscillate between both modes. Silly serious. Silly serious. Dick eat. Dick eat. What's that being called? Um, bean, bean, bean cheese. 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 Ah! <laughs> Holy shit. Bean cheese. Bean cheese. Bean cheese. Yeah, that's uh, Jay. Come on, I'm man. A mechanic. It's, no, Jay. Those are I'm a mechanic he's, drive turkey. Yeah, he's got those pockets <laughs> in case. Drive turkey. <laughs> he has to keep things. I yeah, but it. no, I hear Finally it from yeah, I didn't know. I never knew anything. And until then, and then I hear it. I hear it, bro. He says here and hair with the same level in it pronunciation. Hair. I hear it. No, you hear, not you hair it. But hey, regardless. Oh, See, now, who's, now who's in a row? Uh, that's my stage voice. Apologize. But you know, I did stage. But then, like, uh, whatever <laughs> okay, it was, I quit once we were on. How long were we on Rogan? Because. I finally brought up on Rogan Rogan's. Like, no, you and I. Here comes a superhero story. It's, it never. These guys, they always fucking lie because everything always ends in like a heroic way. And then I just quit like a superhero. Like, come on, man. Look, here comes a lie. Here comes a cap. I had that talk out there. Because I, I like, didn't yeah. know what the fuck was going really, on. Really, really, Brian saved your life is where he's going with this. No, I didn't. I just didn't know what was going on with him because he was more and more disconnected. Yeah. He was interrupted constantly. He wasn't listening. He wasn't taking the stories. I could tell I would, I would say something. He wouldn't even hear it and he'd just move on. I Brian, he does that all the time. Why is this guy cucking for this guy so much? It's so sad and perfect to see a man. Oh, by the way, Rinx is looking all the fucking Rinx right now, isn't it? He's fucking aged like a fucking pear. He's fucking, forget avocado, he's aged like a pear. Have you ever bought a pear, a bag of pears from the fucking shop and you bring them home and they're fucking, you know, they're not ripe at all. They're super fucking hard, like a fucking rock. And then you cover them with something or you leave them out to, you know, whatever, to breathe. And then you come back a, a couple of minutes later and they're fucking turned into fucking mush. That's what he looks like. You turn around like, shit, what happened to you? Brian Cannon's looking all, all of 60. You tell me that guy's 65, I'm believing you. You tell me that guy's 45, I'm saying, damn. Kevin Hart skit, that Kevin Hart uh, meme. Damn. If you tell me he was 45, I'd be like, shit. Uh, Brian Cannon's looking all of his age right now, right? He's, uh, he's, his face is getting, his face is giving 65, his arms are giving 45. <laughs> holy shit his face is giving 65 I'm, honestly look at him fucking hell and he's out here cucking for brendan you well uh, you disconnected and not connecting bruv he's been not connecting from years from day dot he's not been giving the shit about what you're saying <laughs> i was also i was i wasn't present i was also kind of mean like I kind of kind of mean kind of mean you mean like a bully define bullying papa Define being mean. Define it. 
Define being mean. Mean. Kinda mean is the understatement of the year. Kinda. Kinda yinder. Come on, yada. I didn't give a yeah. fuck. Yeah. I was just go. I go, never go, saw go, the go. meme. I just saw you totally. Not of course you didn't see the meme. You're busy sucking him off. Ah, ah. Fuck you. No, I didn't see the meme. Daddy, keep paying me, please. I've got alimony to pay, please. I hit you a few times. But yeah, yeah, you struck me. Yeah, yeah it's interesting. Like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a super isolating drug. Like, you just you do it in prime. Hilarious, isn't it? Jay Moore, I'm assuming, I didn't. I didn't watch the entire episode. I just took out this clip. But from what I am able to surmise from the comments and the replies in the Friday Kids subreddit, Jay Moore brought up the issue of his addictions. <laughs> and they made it all about him. So he had to sit there and listen to them make it about themselves. And then jump back in and say, anyway, what I've learned on my journey actually being sober and actually doing the work and actually going to therapy and bloody blah blah blah, blah. <laughs> it's fucking hilarious private it's not mm -hmm. something you share it's very monetized and itemized like i know how many i have left i know i got this flight i know i gotta land there i'm not sure where the hookup is but you get really uh aggressive and you interrupt a lot and it's constant and you're in your head. So I don't hear a word you're saying because all I'm thinking is that what I just said makes sense. I'm not going to lie. Adderall sounds kind of fun. But from what people have been telling me in the comments and from what I've been reading online, because it's not the most popular drug here in the UK. I don't really, again, I don't really know because I left uni some time ago. But even when you was in uni, no one was really doing Adderall. It wasn't really a thing that's done here in the UK that much. Unless, I'm, unless I don't know about it. But effectively, it's basically speed. But I don't know, if this was something that was prevalent when I was growing up, I maybe would have been susceptible to doing so myself. I'm not going to lie. Like, it does sound kind of fun. <laughs> but I am understanding if you're a podcaster that has too much free time and you make your own schedule and you do add a rule under the, under the guise that you're going to do more content and shit, it can get you down a really dark path very very quickly and you're seized up we were talking about like just riding the brake at a red light White knuckle. just God, like having Fuck to go that. i had to go through brakes on Fuck my car that. just from fucking pumping it dude i i remember all the cracks in my teeth yes remember the dentist like oh, he has cracks fuck. in his teeth and i was like yeah it's because stress oh dude is that all because you, you you clench down god damn man yeah dude, he's, he's missing it dude yeah i people I was and like nobody today, knows man. you're doing it no. Like you were saying, and like, or you didn't know he was doing it. Nobody I had knows no he's doing it. It's a, he, it's his a face pill. would be swollen. Yeah. But, right, but they just thought like. <laughs> Brendan gave him that look. Shut the fuck. What? What do you mean by my face would be swollen? Brian's saying everything now. And Brendan gave him that look like, shut your, shut your mouth. Mind your manners. You see that little look? What? Face swollen? What are you, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Uh, I, people. I was and and like, nobody brilliant. knows you're doing it. No. Like, you were saying and like or you didn't know he was doing it nobody knows no you're idea. doing it it's a, he, it's his a face pill. would be swollen yeah. but yeah. but they just <laughs> brenda gave it a look is it he rolled his eyes a little Thought bit like I... <laughs> I love it. hilarious they have an intervention about this guy allegedly curing himself of adderall addiction yeah all right buddy sure the only reason why you're not doing it anymore because you're not friends with bgl he probably has no idea how to get it himself that's the only reason why he's not doing it but come on man come on let's be real i was fucking insane because i would be so irascible and then you'd be like not you but somebody be like bro like are you all right and i'd be like i'm fine what the fuck then i go and use more because i'm bent out of shape yep. by what you said then the next time you see me i'm even more frenetic yep and then you're like, I don't want to hang out with that guy anymore. I'm yeah. like, so it's just this this space keeps happening. Until you're by space. yourself. And you're completely Did, well, you by want yourself. Adderall hey, guess what? You're by yourself, Brendan. You're by yourself, basically. Anybody that hangs, that's a sad kind of cautionary tale, I think. I think even Adam22 is a good example of it, going through what he's going through now with No Jumper and everybody leaving. And obviously Brendan and to some extent Joe. It's a cautionary tale. Keep in touch with your friends and your family or maybe cultivate a circle of people around you that actually are your friends because you could reach a point in time if you're not really open to criticism or feedback or brutal honesty with your friends where everybody just like, you know, they like, they get to a point where they don't need you as much as they did before in the past and they just stop hanging around you and then you end up having to pay people to be your friends, essentially. And the only people that are around you are the people that you pay. That's where Brendan is position-wise. There was a period in time in the past where Brendan probably could say he had a lot of friends in comedy. But now with the rape allegations against Chris, no, rape allegations against Brian Callen, the pedo allegations and 
harassment allegations against Chris D'Elia. A lot of people are kind of staying away from those guys because they're not good for rep. They're not good for the image or what. So they kind of not answering calls, not going to their pods. Blah 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 blah. Cool. If that's the case, but what happens there is that you end up being alone on your new island and it's not the best island to be on now so this is a cautionary tale in that regard where you end up being alone not through drugs just for just you just being a douchey having a douchey attitude that's the unfortunate side of things when you try to sprint Chappelle. oh yeah so so the he i'm, I'm he goes i'm gonna race you and I, he's 40 i go i'm like please don't sprint i go please do, warm up please warm up and he goes like zay i got this right in my face he goes i got this i'm like i go shut the fuck up i, I got go, this i was no way are they blaming Brendan Schaub thinking he could beat Dave, sorry, Dave Chappelle. He could beat fucking Chappelle Lacey in a race on the fact that he was addicted to Adderall. You can get fucked if, you, if they're doing that. No way are these guys trying to spin Brendan getting embarrassed, getting embarrassed in that race and faking an injury, faking the fact that he blew his hamstrings out when he didn't. He didn't blow out one hamstring or anything. At most, he got cramped because he didn't stretch and because he doesn't drink water. He believes he gets the same amount of liquids through coffee and drinking whiskey and booze that he do if he drank water. So he doesn't drink water. That's why he probably got a cramp and because he didn't stretch. No way are they trying to blame that embarrassing race and Brendan's refusal just to admit that he lost and have some level of honour and grace about it and hold his hands up and say, yep, I got that wrong. I was being too cocky and arrogant. I thought because I was a former athlete that I could be faster than some, you know, professional gymnast from back in the day. Uh, was it Chile, the whatever he was, um, Chappelle, Lacey, and also being a fucking black guy, he's going to be faster than you anyway, unless you're faster than him. And Brendan was never known as somebody that had fast twitch explosive pace or whatnot. That was never him. So the fact that he would, thought he would be, could be faster than this guy, it was insane anyway. He goes and runs the race and then he, he, he realizes he's losing and then fakes he had an injury. Nowhere are they trying to blame that on fucking Adderall. The revisionist history, the coddling of this guy's emotions and feelings is so embarrassing. I would hate it. I would hate to be 45 years old, however old fucking Brendan Shaw is, and to be like this as an adult, it would be my worst nightmare to have friends around me and family who couldn't say what they actually felt about me honestly. Fair enough if I don't receive it well, but they can't even be comfortable to say it. They have to kind of coddle me and make excuses. Oh, it was the Adderall. Oh, it was a win. Oh, it was a ground. Excuse me? Your trainers. Huh? No, I just lost. I got embarrassed. I was a douche. I thought I could beat this guy in a race and clearly I couldn't. What the fuck, man? He's like, oh what? I go, I go, you can't just start running on concrete. You, we've been sitting. And he goes, no, I'm going to beat him in a race. And I'm like, this is so fucking weird. Chappelle didn't race him, did he? Yes, he did. Yeah. Who won? Chappelle. Right. Well, you know. He thought it was Dave Chappelle, by the way, not Chappelle Lacey. He thought that was Dave Chappelle. Blew out my hand. He blew out his fucking hand. Blew, blew out both hamstrings. I mean, he had to awesome. lie down. We had to get a car drive and get him in the car drive and drive him here. <laughs> I find it hilarious how Jay Moore doesn't even question how they know Dave Chappelle. He just assumes because they're in LA, they must know him. Do you really think Dave Chappelle's going to waste their time with these guys? Come on, really. But it's it's hilarious how he thinks it's Dave Chappelle. They don't correct him. They just let the story run because it's funner. <laughs> Both hamstrings. Both hamstrings. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was so bad that I could have made fun of him, but I was just like, something's wrong here. I, I couldn't figure it out. It's amazing. Like, as you get older, you ask if the person's okay, then you laugh. When you were a kid, you're like, <laughs> are you okay? You're like, yeah. you know, seriously, okay? So yeah. how long were you doing Adderall? Uh, probably six months, hardcore. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hardcore for me. But I also, I wasn't to the point, like, Jay was like, I was able to be like, you're going down a bad road, and I went cold turkey. Right. But then I was telling him, you don't realize there's like a, a lag because your brain's so used to that that medication mm. that when I was like, I'm going to stop, stopped on a Friday, had shows Saturday and Sunday, then Monday went to do the podcast and your brain just, it can't function off it. So I was flubbing my words. Sometimes I would do a podcast that I'd get done. I, if you, someone was like, what'd you just cover? Couldn't tell you. No idea. Jeez. You know, Can't tell you. we were talking before you got here like, when you do stand up, it's like you're just throwing railroad ties in front of a really fast moving, you're the fast moving train and there's like this, this other spirit that we all have in our business that you just fucking toss in railroad ties right in front of the train. And when you're on Adderall or when you, right when you get off Adderall, that guy's missing and the train still, it's like, mm. you just keep hitting that ditch. I gotta piss. Go piss. <laughs> it's all good. I find it fucking hilarious that they're trying to retell the narrative 
the narrative, as Brendan will say, and try and blame all of his douchebaggy behaviours and his tendencies to interrupt the podcast on Adderall when we all know this was, you know, this behaviour happened uh, BA before Adderall and after Adderall, right? Like, this was always a thing that happened in a consistent run-through tying of fucking Brendan Shaw's podcasting career has been this tendency to keep interrupting, to not letting people finish their sentences, to stepping on stories, stepping on bits, being a fucking bit killer Jones, um, not riffing correctly, not riffing humorously or funny in any type of way, just being devoid of any comedic sort of chops in any kind of fashion, um, trying to one up stories with redacted stories and lies, and just generally being not the best conversationalist on the podcast it's a common theme around this guy and the fact that they're trying to spin it as an adderall thing is fucking wild and the fact that brian callen is the one doing it insane that he's cucking for this guy so much like this insane a guy in your fucking 60s or 70s or whatever how old he is that like grown man trying to molly coddle the emotions of a grown adult with kids it's just fucking redacted because if he actually wants the guy to make some change he'll be honest and say hey guy we got a good show going here but i feel like you're fucking shit up because you just can't stop interrupting can you shut your fucking pio up for a minute and let me speak is that possible can you do that for me Okay, yeah, cool. Let's just try a couple episodes with headphones on. Let's try a couple episodes where you let me... Because you see Brian Cannon, he's on other shows. He's so loose. He's way more funnier. He's a lot more interesting because he gets a time to actually be himself. He has a chance to finish his sentences, to, go, you know, f f flesh out a thought or whatever, or go through some bits. Maybe only with Stephen Crowder, he kind of feels on walking on eggshells, but Stephen Crowder's a little bit of a, you know, he runs a tight shit. But anytime you see Brian Callan on any show that isn't to do with Brendan, he's way more loose, way more free, way more chill. Why? Because he's not having to constantly tame the lion, tame the interrupting lion that's there, that's fucking covered in fucking Adderall dust and shit, right? That's what he's doing. It's absolutely weird, really weird, really strange. But hey, ho. Hey ho!